Hello, everybody. Andrew Blake from the digitalaudiomanual.com with another episode of Cubase Tips for the week of January 2nd, 2026. So let's talk about audio effects. There's basically three primary ways when you go to add an effect to one of your sounds in Cubase. First way would be to add it as an insert effect, or you may add it as a send effect, or you may make use of what's called direct offline processing. Each one of these methods has strengths and weaknesses, pros and cons, and things to consider on how you're going to affect your sound. Let's begin looking at this as an insert effect. If we take any channel and open that channel up. On the left-hand side, you have a tab that says Inserts, and this is where you would put in an insert effect. For our example, let's try a delay. I can hit my drop-down list, and I could look one by one through all the different categories. But if I know I'm looking for a delay, I can just type in the word delay. And that typically will narrow it down. And then I'm going to choose this ping pong. Once that's in as an insert effect, I can hit the E button and I can make adjustments to this effect. When you use something as an insert effect, then you're going to use the mix knob on the effect itself to decide how much or how little of the effect you want. You can do the same thing in the actual mixer. There's an area that says insert. You can click on that option. And then the same thing applies. In this case, if we want to delay, we could choose that from the list. Again, open it with the E button and then make our adjustments. And finally, on this example, with any particular channel highlighted, we can go over to this area on the left called the inspector. And there's a tab in here that says insert. And once again, we can hit the drop down list, choose a type of effect, click on it, open it with the E button, and again, make our adjustments. All three of these insert effect ways pretty much produce the same result. So it's just a matter of whatever's convenient for you. And then when you need to remove the different effect, once again, click on the drop down arrow. And at the very top, you'll have an option that says no effect. Click on that. And that particular effect will then be removed. Let's begin talking about direct offline processing. This is a way you can add effects to particular audio events where you actually kind of burn the effect right into the audio. And there's pros and cons to going this way. But probably one of the best benefits is that when you apply an effect this way, Ultimately, you're going to hardly use up any processing power after you've added that to your audio. Now, this only works with audio, and in this case, I have a MIDI part. So I have to convert this over to audio first. I'll just render it off, and that gives me a piece of audio like this. And to begin adding effects using this direct offline processing, first you have to actually select your audio, and you can either come up to your audio menu, and right at the top, you have the option for direct offline processing, or if you haven't changed it, like I have here, you can hit the F7 key. Once you do that, and you get this direct offline processing dialog box. And at that point, you can choose either a plugin from this drop down list, which works a lot like your insert effects, or you can pick some kind of particular process. And there's a various list of options here, or you can load various effects presets. Let's put a reverb on this. Let's type reverb in the search. And I'll come down and choose Roomworks SE. And you can see that it opens up the interface in this dialog and it has its name highlighted on the left. I'm going to turn the mix up to exaggerate the sound. So you have something like this. And if you make this check mark on the auto apply, as you adjust things on this effect, you will actually see the wave from your audio change as it applies the different effects settings. One thing to pay attention to is your audio needs to remain selected. If I deselect this audio, you can see my direct offline processing goes away as well. Click back on the audio, and there it is. Even if you deselect it, you can still hear it, but you can't do any further editing to it. As you create your different processes, if you find that there's ones you use all the time, you can actually take that highlighted effect and then drag it down into this lower area, which then will allow you to have it as a quick favorite. If I come up to this effect, right click on it and say delete, then I can quickly hit the one in my favorites to recall that with all the settings in place. Another interesting option that comes in handy sometimes with this if I go to any particular track and choose an insert effect from there, for example, I'll go back to the Reverbs SE again, and I adjust the settings. I can actually take that effect right from the insert, click on it and drag it into my direct offline processing window. I'm going to go back and turn it off in the channel settings. And then I have that sound now burned right onto the audio with direct offline processing, which again uses up hardly any CPU power, which is quite different from the way it acts when it stays as an insert effect. Let's talk about time stretch and pitch shift algorithms. As you begin processing audio in Cubase, especially when you try to raise or lower the pitch, you'll notice that you're going to get very good results 
But at the same time, those results are actually determined by settings called algorithms. For example, changing the pitch of a vocal sound will give you different results when you use the algorithm designed for vocals. And changing the pitch of a drum sound will give you different results based on the drum algorithms. To begin exploring this, take any piece of audio and select it. Look up on the info line to an area that says algorithm. If you click on that, you'll see that you have a number of different choices. One category called elastic and one category called standard. If we choose the standard, you can see that it says standard drums, plucked, pads, vocals, mixed, custom, solo, all these different categories that are going to affect your audio slightly different. If we go to the elastic category, we have time, pitch, tape, and a number of other choices, and each one of these is going to affect your audio slightly different. In the beginning, you're just going to want to experiment by selecting different ones as you change the options in your audio, and then just listen to the difference to find out which ones give you the result you're looking for. These various algorithms also show up in different places. If I double click on this piece of audio, opening it up in the sample editor, I come over to the tab that says Audio Warp. Once again, I have that drop down for these different algorithms. And if I take this piece of audio, go to the audio menu and tell it to change events to part. And again, double click on this. Now it opens this audio in what's called the audio part editor. Another window like your sample editor, but gives you different options to work with. But once again, when I select the audio and look up on the info line, there's my choices for these different algorithms again. The longer you work with Cubase, the more you're going to find different scenarios where those algorithms are going to come into play. And you're going to want to be able to find them and make your choices to make sure you're getting the sound that you're looking for. And if you're searching for deeper explanations on all these subjects like audio effects, direct offline processing, or these pitch shift algorithms, and lots more step-by-step -step demonstrations of how to use all these different features, be sure to click on the link in the description of this video or visit the digitalaudiomanual.com for more information. As always, it's great to have you here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.